This is the Hasselblad 907X 50C. It is a 50 megapixel medium format camera and it is small and beautiful. Hasselblad have been creating high quality modular camera systems for decades now. And although they came from film and film is still a massive part of what they do, they're now firmly established into digital as well. The 907X, which is just this part here, this little slither, has been designed with the CFV 250C back in mind in order to create this small, portable, but still really high quality camera. If you're already entrenched into the Hasselblad film system, maybe you're lucky enough to have something like a 500C, then the CFV250C back will fit onto any V system camera that has been created since 1957. You can just unclip it and clip it on instead of your film cartridge back. So it means that any film camera you do have, it can become digital. Now I know that's not always the point for people, but it is nice to have that flexibility. It means you don't have to wait, and if you're on a job, that might make things a little bit easier for you, but also it means things are going up in price at the moment and film is expensive so it is nice to give yourself that little bit of flexibility and maybe just take at least the running cost down a little bit it's not like Hasselblad or a cheap system anyway but it takes something out of it and just makes it a little bit more flexible if you do own one of those cameras already it just allows you to bring the old look to this new technology one downside of looking down at a screen like this is it's not good for my chin situation for filming so that's a that's a big downside to Hasselblad just in general <laughs> but I hope we do get 14 stops of dynamic range with this because it is a it is a dynamic rangey day I'm sure I can bring a lot of this back I mean zooming in uh, there's a lot of detail and using the histogram uh, in the preview is obviously I can see what I'm doing I think not having a histogram available in the display options is just an absolute pain, to be honest. Just a firmware update, just needs a firmware update. As in, I don't, I don't know if they're bringing it in, but that's all Hasselblad need to do, so they, they should do that. I'm gonna talk about specs of this camera a little bit later in the video, but really, Hasselblad is all about the experience of shooting. You buy a Hasselblad for kind of one or two reasons. You need a really professional tool that has a certain look, or you just really love them. Ideally, both of those reasons. The 907X's design has that Hasselblad feel. You can really sense the heritage and the brand running through this design. It looks absolutely great. It even has the flip out screen so you can look down, because you've got no viewfinder to look down on, of course, because this is a mirrorless camera. The camera is only that big. There's no mirror to look down on. So they have to do it with a screen and it flips up like this. So you can even do that from the hip style of shooting, which is great. But that doesn't necessarily make it practical. On the front of the camera, we have the shutter button and around it, one dial. On the side is another button. And what you do is you hold the camera like this and you can turn that dial to change the aperture. And when you press the side button in, then that changes the shutter speed. So you can flick that dial between shutter speed and aperture. But that is pretty much all you get in terms of controlling the camera. Now on the back, we have four buttons underneath the screen. That can do things like access the menu system. I think there's one custom, change the display options. But to reach something like ISO, which I think is a pretty standard thing to want to reach, you have to go through the screen. And I found it slightly frustrating and I've missed a couple of shots because I haven't been able to quickly access that. On the other hand, and saying that, the menu system and the screen on this are very nice. The touchscreen is incredibly responsive. The menu system is like very symbol based, very pretty, and it's actually quite hard to get lost in it. A Hasselblad isn't a camera I'm using every day, if I'm, if I'm honest. And not at any point have I had trouble finding something within this menu system. So I think that is really, really great. So I do like the menu system. It just annoys me a bit that I have to access it so often. Oh, 
Oh, it's a slippery boy. <laughs> I don't have good balance just on dry land, like on flat, in boots. So this, this, is, this is just asking for me to have a horrific accident. If you want to go for a walk with the camera, you want a bit more grip, or you want to change up that feel and have a little bit more control, then you can buy this grip that attaches. It's really easy to do. It basically magnetizes into place. And you just secure it in by twisting this. That's it, that's locked in. It's got some uh, terminals on the bottom there, so it immediately communicates with the camera. And I'm about to get very wet. <laughs> And that's it. You literally can hold it like a standard camera. So if you're used to that, makes it really easy. You've got dials for control on the front and back. So you can do shutter speed and aperture really easily. On top, you've got a menu button, play, AF to MF and an AFD button. And you've even got a little joystick for controlling where your AF point is. So all in all, I really like that as an addition. I think just for the safety of like when you're walking along and holding it, it feels really nice. It does make the camera like more conspicuous, obviously. So it has been really nice sort of getting some, I say street shots, you know, lifestyle shots as you walk along this beach. It's not very intrusive because obviously you're looking at the screen like this. Um, and that doesn't really make a difference to that, but it does make it a larger piece of kit. So that's worth bearing in mind. Shooting a spaniel puppy on the beach has got to be like the ultimate challenge for a Hasselblad. It's literally impossible. This is not this is not an action camera for, for auto focusing on dogs, let me tell you. The AF isn't super reliable, there's no doubting that. But this camera is forcing you to be more skillful basically. So it is forcing you to pick up manual focus again and use that. Um, and I think that's actually really good because when I first started out, I had loads of manual focus lenses because I couldn't afford lenses that worked. And I was so good at manual focusing, but now I've lost that skill because I don't use it very often. So I think having a camera that kind of like forces you into doing that, otherwise you will miss shots, is actually kind of a positive if you're looking for an experience with a camera, not just immaculate shots every single time because that's not, that's not what you're going to get if you're using the AF. really laid down, hasn't he? Got himself in a right awkward position. The screen might be good at looking down at things, but it's not good at looking up. Still sharp. Inside of here, we've got a 44 by 33 millimeter medium format 50 megapixel sensor, which gives us about 14 stops of dynamic range. And this is programmed to work with Hasselblad's natural colour science, so HNCS. And that gives a really kind of smooth analog look to the images that people really like. Hasselblad definitely has a feel, has a look to its images. If you are looking for an explanation of how medium format works against full frame, there is tons of stuff online. I don't really want to make this video too specky, but basically the individual photo diodes are larger on the sensor and therefore they let in more light. You can produce incredible images with a sensor like this and it will look different to using a full frame sensor. Now, unfortunately, the time I have this camera, I, I just don't have a 50 megapixel like equivalent full frame camera to test it against, but that is something I definitely wanna do in the future. So if you wanna see that, please put in the comments that that's something you'd like to check out and I'll, I'll try and make that happen with this camera or something similar with another full frame camera, just so you can see the difference in the type of light that you're getting come into the sensor. Today, I've been exclusively shooting with the 45P, which is an F4 Hasselblad lens. It's nice and small, makes this a really portable handheld little setup. Now, these XCD lenses, because this is a completely kind of modular system, they have a shutter in the lens. So these contain leaf shutters. Now, if you aren't familiar with this type of system, what that means is that this lens can do flash sync up to two thousandth of a second, which is what the camera can shoot to, two thousandth of a second. 
Obviously that's very quick, you don't need anything high speed set up with your flash or anything like that, it just syncs up. Now, the reason for that is because shutters on what you count as, say, a normal camera work horizontally, they move up and down the frame, and so when you have your flash go off, if your shutter speed is too slow, part of it hasn't opened, so you get this sort of black bar across your frame. Leaf shutters work like aperture. They're like this, and they go out and back in, right? So that, that's how a leaf shutter works, or out that way. Um, and so you don't have that same issue that you do with horizontal shutters. Also, because they're moving out all at the same time, it takes away pretty much any vibration caused by your shutter as well. So it makes it really nice and reliable if you are shooting anything kind of on the long exposure side of things. I also want to talk a little bit about how shooting medium format changes the way we look at the focal length of lenses a little bit. Now we're all used to sort of doing that maths in our head from crop frame sensors to full frame sensors. The same is true for medium format, but obviously the sensor is bigger, so it works the other way around. Today I'm shooting on a 45 mil, or it's technically a 46.2 mil, and so I've actually got a 35 mil lens effectively. It works the other way. And the same goes for the depth of field. So I get a shallower depth of field with this than I would if you were using F4 on a full frame body. F4 is F4, but this has the look of something about a stop to a stop and a half wider, around sort of 3.2, possibly a little bit more than that, but I, I would say this is, looks kind of more like a 3.2. So it's worth keeping that in mind because it explains why when you look at medium format, range of lenses across not not just Hasselblad but all of the manufacturers they're quite often not super quick or super wide because when you're looking at the focal lens it's actually a little bit wider than you might initially think <gasps> red squirrel Whoa. i want to photograph the red squirrel i don't think i've ever seen one in the wild it's a little fluffy do you reckon they'll know if I take it home? Come on. They'll be like, that garlic farm t-shirt you bought is moving. It's, it's uh, 50 megapixels now, you can take one here and zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd need their H6D 400 for that. <laughs> I would genuinely love to tr just to see what that's like. Yeah. Just, just to see how close you can get. Like I'd love to take a picture of an eye, that's always my test. They're gonna make me come to them, aren't they? I was really trying to be like the goat whisperer. <laughs> oh, don't put your head through the fence. Hi. Hello. Oh, stinging, that was gone through my shoe. Ah. George, you are really in my shot. <laughs> oh my God, this is the best thing ever. I love goats. Can I get a wax goat? Like a wax pygmy goat? That'd make me so happy. Guys, can you please comment that you would like me to have... I've got some, like, a nice garden. He can live in my garden or she. We can have a lovely time together. Get loads of goat pictures for you. Oh, they'd be so loved. They'd have the best time. Comment that I need a goat and I'll show it to my manager. You never know. I mean, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're super cute. Oh, hello. <laughs> Why is that bit wet? What? None of the rest of the grass was wet. Oh, no. I feel like I feel like I might be goat wee. Right, time to leave now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. They're like mission accomplished. Yeah. Peed on that <laughs> <laughs> leave us alone trying to eat our grass. <laughs> I'm just going to change the battery. It's now five in the afternoon, so I'm pretty impressed that this one's lasted all day. Um, but I think it's a good time to point out some things. So I'm going to change this one over here. Battery goes in here. It's a simple sort of pull it out, push it back in mechanism. We've got dual card slot, both SD. Um, and the battery is locked into place by that little switch. So you just push that and the battery pops out. 
I also want to point out that there is literally zero weather sealing on this camera. It is not hardy. Uh, there's no weather sealing around this compartment. There's no weather sealing at all at the top, how you get to the sensor. So although this is a camera that is great for landscape photography, and it is, it is so detailed and beautiful, like don't take it out when it rains <laughs> because this costs far too much money to uh, get it wet, basically. If you do find you need a viewfinder, you can get this one. Basically, this little device goes in where your Hasselblad nameplate was. You just have to unclip the back, pop that in, and then that gives you a cold shoe where you can then attach this little viewfinder. Now, I don't particularly like it. It's just an optical viewfinder with different sort of uh, scratchings on the glass so you can see different focal lengths, what kind of shot you're gonna get. But because it sits so high up in comparison to the lens, for me, it makes it pretty much impossible to compose properly. If you use this over a period of time, obviously you would get used to that. So. If you like that style of shooting, that's great for you. And actually looking through it, it is quite a nice um, viewfinder to use. It cups your eye quite nicely. But personally, I, I think I would find that slightly frustrating. Um, I would probably use that cold shoe for something really cool, like one of those old fashioned film range finders or something like that, if it was me. Um, but it also would allow you to use like a flash gun and stuff like that and just pop it on top. Obviously, as I say, it is a cold shoe, not a hot shoe, but it does allow you to mount something on the top of the camera. However, having to take the back off to do that, slightly frustrating, but when it's on there, it's a pretty neat little setup actually really interesting to shoot here. I know it's not like normally you go right down by the water there but actually having like the ferry coming in and you know there's a couple of people taking pictures and you've got this lovely sort of wide road coming in above it's actually really pretty to shoot. It's actually really interesting that I've been shooting all day with this and I've seen a lot of people and I've been taking pictures of a lot of people as well and not one person's looked at the camera we go out and we review stuff all the time and people look, they talk to us, they ask us about the cameras all the time because we're filming. George is here behind camera, like videoing stuff. Not one person has looked today. This camera is incredibly inconspicuous and it makes it great for like street style of shooting and lifestyle. I really enjoy that about it. We are on the ferry and heading back from the Isle of Wight, finishing up our day with the Hasselblad 907X 50C. Using this camera is definitely an experience. If you don't use medium format very often, it does offer something new. It's really enjoyable. You have to think a lot and it does make you feel more part of the art of photography, maybe more than just focusing on technicals all the time, which is actually really enjoyable. It slows you down, but it also slows down what you're able to capture. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Now there is so much to this camera and if you'd like to find out more about it, you can of course pop onto the website, there's a ton of info on there, pop a link in the description and you can also ask us a question in the comments so make sure to pop down there and let us know what you think about the 907X. But for now, a massive thank you for watching, I hope you join me again soon for some more videos from Wax Photo Video.